<laughs> uh, the political cartoonists in this next film don't need a six-shooter to take on the big guns. A sharpened pencil and a fast wit are the weapons of their choice. Yes, the last night we sent Lucy Blazing Saddle Siegel into a Soho saloon bar to meet up with some of the best cartoonists in the business. We've got to stop this. <laughs> Cartooning is kneeing somebody in the groin and doing it with a smile. This week, receiving a kick where it hurts, it's been the turn of Jeremy Hunt, Secretary of State for Health. Tonight, a coven of cartoonists has gathered to discuss the most hilarious and nefarious political moments over the last 12 months. And we're in the perfect surroundings. This restaurant has been a favourite haunt for politicians plotting coups and destroying careers for over 50 years. Ideal fodder for cartoonists. The thing about a cartoon is it, it does have certain privileges. It can say things that an article can't. You know, you wouldn't get an article by Polly Toynbee, for example, from my newspaper, starting off by saying the Prime Minister's got a really stupid, ugly little mouth, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is what I do on a daily basis by yeah. drawing the Prime Minister with a really stupid, ugly little mouth. Do you know when you've got something really funny that crystallises that moment? When I'm doing the roughs and I think, yes, it's, you have that eureka moment, and then... As I begin doing it and work into it, I file it and I hate it. Sometimes I think it's the funniest thing I've ever done in my life. My editor will just stare at it and go, I have no idea yeah. what you're talking about. Just <laughs> throw it in, in the bin That's immediately. Very common. Who's the most brutal? Who really goes for it here? Martin. Martin. Yeah. But there are whole swathes of people out there just waiting to be offended. So I've received death threats from across the political spectrum by email. Death threats by email don't count. Why you know, do you get so angry, Martin? Well, because people do terrible things. People say, you know, why are you so cynical? I'm not cynical, I'm sceptical and also constantly disappointed. Take Tony Blair. He was the most popular Prime Minister this country's ever known in 1997. Uh, after he resigned, he couldn't actually walk down the street without people trying to do a citizen's arrest on him as a war criminal. Portrayed as Mad Mad, Nadine Dorries became a target this year after her appearance on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. One cartoon was had huge teeth. And I spent a week going, are my teeth big? Yeah. To everybody I met. Why is somebody like Nadine such a target. And I do well, have big teeth, you know. Well, because she was in the news, <laughs> quite simply. I mean, the thing is, it's said that the one thing worse for a politician than being drawn on a political cartoon is not being drawn on a political cartoon because it means, first of all, they, nobody's heard of them, mm -hmm. they're insufficiently important, and also they're unrecognisable. I would hazard a guess that any MP in the House of Commons would be flattered indeed to be drawn by you. Oh, the, the compliments are flowing <laughs> But I said the point about cartoonists is it's mind over matter. We pretend they matter and they pretend they don't mind. <laughs> and, oh, that's exactly no, what's going on here. Um, I sold my work to politicians and I know where they hang it. They hang it in their really? toilets. Yes. And you don't have to be a Freudian to work out what's going on there. They are getting rid of the bad magic by diffusing the damage we're trying to do to them, you know, as the bloodless assassins, the silent assassins. This year, satirists lost perhaps one of their greatest sources of parody, Margaret Thatcher. So how does the current crop of political leaders measure up? You know you've got them when they just pour out of the end of your hand and you've recreated them. You have their soul. Farage and his face and the beer and the cigarettes, just an absolute gift. Any story involving Ed Miliband, because I absolutely love drawing him. He's the full package in terms of what he looks like, the way he behaves, the public perception of him, you've just got so much to go on. If you want to actually produce an icon, Thatcher the mad staring eye. <laughs> so one thing that Cameron has not developed, which means he's not a great Prime Minister, he hasn't got a mad staring <laughs> eye. <laughs> 19, no, 2004. Brilliant, Lucy. Now we're joined tonight by two of those top cartoonists, Ben the Kid Jennings and <laughs> Buffalo Barbara. And we're still at it. Why are we still at it? I've got no idea. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, now, what have you two been sketching since you arrived here today? Um, well, I think we both had a little go at... That's pretty good. You could just guess. Randomly I'll back. take either of those, to be honest. Yeah! No, I'm happy yeah. with those. Um, yours, Bob, does look a little bit like Ian Hislop. Oh, are they supposed to be me? Are they supposed to be me? <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> Very good, though. You've got the orange hair. Excellent. Yeah, well, um, so we've got a live, <laughs> we've got a live challenge for you next. Um, Ian has picked a story from today's newspaper. Yeah. We're going to give you ten minutes to think about it, and then five minutes to sketch a cartoon, which we'll have a look at before the end of the show. So, Ian, what's the story that you? Well, I'll read it from this, which is that this is the news that the NSA has been listening in on the phone calls of 35 world leaders. They're not doing it anymore, by the way. You know, they didn't oh, no way. <laughs> Including Angel, Angela Merkel. So you have 10 minutes. 
telling us to draw. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you've got some ideas together already, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Topic. We've got a few ideas already. Can yeah. you? It's been an ongoing topic as well, so it's, uh... Right. So you're already sort of in the groove, sort of. I yeah. love drawing Angela Merkel. Any excuse? Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't draw as much since Sarko. You go, well, boss. Yeah. Okay, so you've got ten minutes more to think about it, and five minutes to draw it live before the end of the program. Off you go, boys. Go on. All right. Okay. Very good. Boys, you have 30 seconds to finish your cartoons before we want to see the drawings. Oh, this is exciting. OK, once again, the topicality chosen for these two champion cartoonists this afternoon was world leaders being booked by the US. Is that correct, Alex? Yes, that is perfectly They both have a, a sort of almost questionable fondness for cartooning Angela Merkel for some bizarre reason. <laughs> we don't know why. Walking into the Queen Vic, if we're not careful. <laughs> All right, whilst they're coming over here, let's look at these things here. Ian Smith, circa 1963, when he was three. Forgive the dodgy haircut, he blames his mum. Oh. Uh, this is Raymond uh, from Essex. He's now 30. Very cute picture. Ian, who do and you have? And this is there? Chris Ledger in oh. Times Gone By. Look at that. How Thanks cool. for all your pictures. Yeah, we had a load of pictures. All right, boys, come on. Uh, world leaders being bugged. First of all, Ben. Right, well, I've got Obama depicted literally as an earwig going through the years of Francois Hollande and Angela Merkel. Very good, round of applause there. Bob, let's have a look at yours. I've gone for Angela in the bath. Oh, I love uh, that. Vicious <laughs> looking periscope. Yeah, I'm very worried about you, Angela Merkel, but brilliant effort. Ian, thanks for being on the yes. programme. Pleasure.